Hey guys, how's it going? This is Herbert Yuba. Welcome back to Premiered. Today we're going to cover questions 5 through 10. Okay, so in the previous video, when we were doing um, November 2020, uh, paper 1 for combined science, we actually covered questions 1 through 4. Then we uh, unloaded uh, question 5. So we skipped and covered question uh, 6 instead. So today we're going to go from 5, uh, then skip question 6, and then go all the way through chain okay so as always i advise you to actually follow through on uh, each and every question there but if you are you find out that maybe if you actually know the question i'll actually put the timestamps there so that you can skip to uh, whatever question that you want okay so when you realize that you know this question maybe you know the, everything there is to know about that question then feel free to actually skip to the next part i'll be putting timestamps on this question Okay, so the first question, it asks us um, uh, which organ produces bio, okay? So bio, it's, um, it's a fluid that's really controversial. It's controversial for, for, a, for a handful of reasons, okay? So one of the reasons is our students, they actually confuse this. So you students, you actually confuse this for uh, an enzyme. But then bio is they are not bio. It's it's not it's not an enzyme, okay? So they are the other name for for bio. By the way, it's also called go. So go is an uh, go bladder. So also called go. That's the other name. Okay. So if you hear go, they actually are pertaining to uh, bio as well. So it's not an enzyme. It's a, it's a fluid. It's a digestive fluid. Uh, it digests lipids, okay, so it digests, uh, if you forget lipid, then you can just say fats, uh, and uh, it's stored in the in the gold bladder, so it's actually stored here in the gold bladder, but then it's not produced in the in the gold bladder, it's actually produced in the in the liver, okay, so this is one of the reasons why it's, it's a very confusing fluid, because uh, uh, it uh, digests fats, so you are inclined to think that it's an enzyme, it's not, and um, also it uh, the place the way it um, the place where it is produced it's not the same place where it is stored so it's actually produced in the liver it's stored in the in the in the in the gallbladder and then it, it's actually released uh, into the um, uh, small intestines okay so uh, that, that's uh, another issue uh, it's uh, discharged into the the duodenum so yeah that's this just about it for for this part so let's quickly move to uh, question six okay question seven it says which factor decreases the rate of transpiration uh, in a plant okay so transpiration is essentially the loss of water in a plant so the loss of water in a plant sorry for my handwriting it's very terrible i know but uh, the loss of water in a plant that's this transpiration uh, uh, through the leaves okay so this water loss it's um, it's usually through the leaves so there are a handful of um, um, factors that affect this so there is temperature so this temperature we are actually referring to atmospheric temperature and then there's also humidity you may find uh, some other textbooks they refer this to this as relative humidity okay it's uh, essentially the, the same thing then you have wind speed can say wind but um, the, to be more exact it's actually the wind speed and then you also have light t intensity light intensity okay and then you also have uh, the leaf surface area so if you are if you if you're doing biology I'm sure they also cover this and uh, so leaf area sorry leaf surface area so if you're doing biology, you might, uh, you might have studied even geography as well. I'm sure we, we did that when, uh, when I was in school. So there are some adaptations for some plants you, that you find in, in deserts. Okay, so they don't have a leaf. Some of them, they actually have thorns instead. Uh, so that reduces the, the surface area. So the surface area, the greater the surface area, the more the opportunity for transpiration. Okay, so... Um, that's uh, another factor that affects the, the rate of transpiration. Okay, so all these factors, they actually directly proportionally increase the temperature, you increase the, the rate of transpiration. All these factors, they're actually uh, the, the same except for one. Okay, so when you increase the humidity, uh, the humidity, it's, um, 
it's it's not directly proportional so it actually goes in the in the opposite direction okay so you increase the humidity uh the amount of um, moisture in the in the atmosphere then uh, the uh, rate of transpiration actually decreases okay so when when it's dry that's when it's dry that means that it's less humid that's when you actually find the the rate of transpiration are uh, increasing so we we'll choose this one all oh, these other factors here they are um, uh, directly proportional to you uh, the rate of um, transpiration it might not be a direct proportion but then when you increase this light intensity the rate of transpiration also increases so in that sense they, they, they go in the same direction okay so that's just about it let's uh, move to you. question 8 question 8 uh, the diagram shows a model of the human alimentary canal okay so which part a b c or d represents where ingestion takes place okay so this is a buzzword uh ingestion what does it mean exactly so ingestion simply means taking in fluid by swallowing um you can find some some sources that reference also absorption but usually it's just by swallowing that's the most basic uh definition okay of um ingestion so if uh, this this were uh, the alimentary um, the alimentary canal which means the dig digestive system it's a model so here this this the intake for food that's where ingestion takes place so it would be actually a okay so uh b this part here you should know it's it's actually uh called um uh defecation okay so to defecate is to poop okay so defect uh, defecation uh you will find it uh in b here most students they actually confuse uh defecation with with uh, excretion excretion is different excretion is um when the the body regulates uh, certain um nutrients in the, in the body system okay so for example uh ammonia ammonia it's well regulated in the body so when you have excess then you you tend to have um ammonia rich um urine and that's that's uh, a, a way that the body uses to actually balance so that um nothing spikes to any dangerous levels okay so they by the way the uh, organs of excretion you're looking at the skin the skin is an organ of uh, of excretion it eliminates excess water and sweat so that's how that is that's the role and then you're also looking at the lungs the lungs they get rid of carbon dioxide so that, that's uh, another role and then the ultimate the ultimate um so you have the skin the lungs and you also have um, ultimately of the kidney okay so the the kidneys there they are very instrumental and they actually if there is any singular organ uh, for uh, for excretion then you're looking at the kidney okay so it's very very important so kidney for example it it's it's involved in um, osmo regulation okay so regulation of water uh, and also getting rid of um, uh, nitrogenous waste and also getting rid um, also balance balancing the the salt intake okay so the the salt in the blood the kidneys are responsible for that okay so here i'm, I'm sure that we're going for uh the the tract so this this one will be the digestive tract and this first part obviously this is a very lousy model it's uh, it's not even uh, close to you uh the actual alimentary canal so that's that's why it's, it's very lousy so for example you would actually have a uh, mechanical digestion so i was expecting that they, maybe they'll put a miller there to actually show that this uh whatever food is being put in here maybe it's being uh grinded so mechanical and also some a little bit of liquid as well so that you'd have um amylase salivary amylase there so the the model doesn't account for for all that so it's, it's a very simplistic um primary school type model but then it does the trick uh, at least ingestion you know you should be clear on that that's where the um, food intake um, happens okay so which is um, uh, this uh, this funnel here so that's just about it uh, let's move to to question nine question nine what does it say oh it says uh, uh, which types of uh, blood vessels contain or contains uh, valves okay so uh, if, if it's one then which type of blood vessels uh, contain valves uh, if it's um, multiple then they they actually want you to identify as well here so the 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 blood vessels that contain valves they're just the the veins okay so uh they contain valves just because to uh they want to prevent backflow okay so to prevent backflow so you'll be having like this okay so the the valves will be like like this so they actually allow for uh 
blood to flow in one direction such that when um, uh, blood flows here and then maybe the the pressure really drops for some strange reason when it wants to back flow these ones here they are they're pushed downwards and then they tend to block here so that um, you know they until the, the pressure is somewhat restored there's actually pressure here but then it's just, it's just slow pressure so that's the use of the of the valves you find them in veins and and also veins you should know veins they have uh, are very we say that veins they have they, there's something called lumen so lumen okay so lumen it's is the in uh, the so you can imagine so this one this one would be the outer layer the lumen would be the the inside part so the the hollow part here we call it the lumen so the veins they actually contain the the, the largest lumen and then capillaries they they contain the smallest but then it's also uh, relative to uh, the size okay so the size of capillaries capillaries they're they very small so but then the, the lumen com uh, for for the size it's actually uh, uh, small as well okay so it's the same thing for the artery uh, capillaries these are, are the vessels that you actually associate with um, uh, oxygenated blood okay so oxygenated blood and to the rest of the body so you actually pump like so much the pressure is very high so you actually need uh, like you know uh, a very thick um, uh, sheet so there is actually a technical name for that you should look it up but then here yeah, it to be like very thick in the case of um, arteries why because it has to sustain a very high blood pressure okay so that's the reason and uh, let's see the last question last question asks us which statement about asexual uh, reproduction is true okay so you can say asexual it's still it's still fine but uh, i say asexual reproduction which statement is true here asexual reproduction means um, uh, there is no meeting of um, this this one was the buzzword so this one was the keyword i always try to identify the keywords just because they are very useful they give a uh, uh, good context to uh, the questions that we'll be doing so asexual reproduction i uh, it's it's an odd to reproduction that doesn't involve fertilization okay so for example budding uh but budding it's um it's it's a form of asexual uh, reproduction okay so uh if, if you've seen there are some trees where uh you, you just have this offshoots that you can uh, check up and then the offshoots they also become trees on their on their own as well so that's asexual reproduction there is no meeting of uh, male and female sex cells the sex cells they're, they're called gametes so there's no meeting of uh, of any kind so that that's that, that's what happens okay so here we are supposed to identify which statement is true about asexual reproduction so the offsprings uh, or the offspring so offspring it's actually just that even in plural are resistant to diseases that affect our parents and this is obviously false okay so uh, because the the offspring they are genetically identical to the parents okay so if you're uh, if i'm um, genetically identical to um someone else that means that whatever affects or whatever disposition that affects that somebody else it also affects me okay so uh, that's that, that's a very false statement and uh, offspring grow from far away from 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 parents okay let's actually put this one on hold okay so many new plants are obtained uh, from from seeds so if it's uh, seed, seed or if uh, it involves seeds this is they actually have to come from sexual reproduction okay so this one cannot be uh, the 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 answer offspring are genetically identical to the to their parents okay so uh offspring they're genetically identical to their parents so the, obviously this one is correct okay so here let's uh let's analyze this one offspring grow far away from parents this is not uh, not true okay so that's for the same reason that i was explaining to you that you always have um these the offshoots that will be happening uh, around the, the parent as well and then there's no seed dispersal of any sort uh, just because they, they are no agents of um of acid dispersal um necessary here because they there's no sexual reproduction to begin with so the offspring they actually tend to uh, grow very very close to their pair from from to, to to their parents okay so uh this one would actually be uh this this one would actually be false and then we just left with um offspring are genetically identical to their parents and that's uh that's just about it um if you haven't subscribed yet uh, make sure you like share and subscribe mm -hmm.